Hey, hey, how you doing? So I read an article recently about chat GPT and in a nutshell, chat GPT's ability to answer math questions has plummeted from like 98% accurate to something like two to 4% accurate. I'll leave a link to the article below. You can go read it for yourself. So essentially this group started testing chat GPT. They seen its accuracy just, you know, basically fall off a cliff. This is very interesting and it was not expected. So if you recall a few months ago when chat GPT hit the world by storm and a lot of people out there were speaking about the end of humanity, the end of the world as we know it, Terminator, terrible stuff. And uh, at least of which was, that's it for coders. That's it for development. It's game over. So I looked at that technology and I tried it out. Bada bing, bada boom. I figured out, no, not even close. It's uh, the typical tech hype cycle. I've observed many, many times in the past. New technology comes on, step number one. Number two, the people behind that technology hype the hell out of it. Step number three, doom and gloomers always come in. Whenever there's a change in anything, the doom and gloomers will come in. Oh my God, this change is gonna end the world. Ah, this is normal, it's basic to the way our brains are structured. If you wanna learn more about that, check out Lizard Wizard. We'll teach you everything about that. So I did a video a couple of months ago saying that number one, I thought that I knew rather that chat GPT and AI was not gonna replace coders anytime soon. Before it replaced coders, they're gonna to have to, they will replace bookkeepers and lawyers and accountants and all kinds of other jobs. Lots of technicians in labs, all those jobs will be gone, long gone before development. Why? Because of the complexity of development. People would see ChatGPT and other AI do code completion, write out a bit of code, and think, oh my God, that's it. Well, that's because the people who were freaking out about that were actually not professional developers. If you saw a person go out there and say, that's it, it's the end of development, you can be sure that this person doesn't know anything or much about development in the real world. A lots of pretenders out there in the lands of the YouTubes. So I did another video after that first one, where I was talking about the fact that GPT was not gonna replace coders anytime soon. I did another video talking about the plateauing effect of a new technology release. I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, the plateauing effect. Well. Let me explain very quickly. Whenever I've seen a new technology hit the scene, it's typically at a plateau, meaning you see this brand new technology and it blows people away. Oh my God. And then they assume that this big change that they just observed is going to continue very quickly. So they did that same mistake with GPT, with AI. They said, wow, wow, look at this. It's almost, oh my God, look how quickly this thing is going to change. What they don't consider is that the company, the people behind the technology, have been working on it for a long, long time. So they only released when they thought it was substantial enough to release. So I've seen it with smartphones, for example. I use that example. If you look at smartphones, yes, the cameras are better, they're faster, the screens are nicer. But at the end of the day, I was at my friend's place recently and she had an iPhone 1 iPhone 1, still functional to this day, original iPhone. So it was a tiny little thing. It was still functional. I couldn't believe it. And she was doing, was doing FaceTime calls and sending and receiving emails, watching YouTube. This was an iPhone, like from the original iPhone, 2007. I was blown away by that. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the phones today, yes, they're bigger, better, better screens, but they're not radically different really from what we had at its inception. The big leap is when it came out, the touchscreen and so forth. I argue the same thing about GPT and AI. I think we've seen that big leap and it's gonna take a long time, I believe, to get to the next level. And around the same time, the head of ChatGPT, he uh, said the same thing. He said that pretty much we've seen the big moves in AI for a while now. So the strange thing that has happened is we've seen this plummet in the effectiveness of the AI of ChatGPT, according to this article, which I link to below this video. That's pretty damn crazy. It didn't just plateau, it actually collapsed under its own weight. And this kind of makes sense to me based on the very little that I know about AI. So I read a couple of chapters in a book by an AI researcher a couple years ago, and he was saying in the book, I'm gonna simplify this, as much as I understand of it anyway, I want to simplify this. So he was saying in the book 
that uh, one of the key elements, one of the key components of developing good AI is the data set that you feed the AI. And the way he described the process of feeding the data set, it's akin to a bit of a black art. So what does that mean to me? That means is that when something is an art, that means you don't understand all the dynamics within that which you do. I think what we're seeing now with this plummeting chat GPT uh, capability is probably bad data being fed into the system. And the system is still, uh, it's still not anti-fragile. It's brittle enough, meaning it's not, the foundation is kind of weak. So the algorithm, if you will, has been thrown off. It's been thrown off. Anyway, so there you go. I thought that was an interesting uh, turn of events. Not, not something I would expect, by the way. I didn't think it would crash. And they'll probably just fix it, roll back, and then they'll get it going again. But uh, that tells you that the way forward is going to be slow and arduous. And it supports my uh, assertion from months back that um, we'll probably see, we're probably in an AI plateau at this point in time. And uh, so don't worry about it.